Good show indeed, Mark. You're familiar with the Rhode Island Center for Freedom and Prosperity. It is a nonprofit, nonpartisan think tank here in the Ocean State, and it is dedicated to providing empirical research on the breadth and depth of individual freedom here in our state. The center focuses on both free market solutions to problems and the general levels of freedom from government regulation or intervention among citizens. It's also associated with a nationwide group of similar freedom research teams, the State Policy Network. Each year, the Rhode Island Center for Freedom and Prosperity tabulates all the votes taken in our General Assembly on bills directly relating to local freedoms. From this research, the Center compiles a scorecard of state legislators which ranks them from most oriented towards freedom to least oriented towards freedom. The scale goes from positive numbers indicating pro-freedom voting to negative numbers indicating an anti-freedom bias. This year's scorecard was just released. It can be found on the Center's website, rifreedom.org. The highest or most pro-freedom score achieved in the General Assembly this year was the plus 27.8. That score was put up by West Warwick Rep and Common Sense contributor Patricia Morgan. The lowest score recorded was minus 73.1. That distinction belongs to Senator William Conley Jr. of East Providence and Pawtucket. In fact, only 11 lawmakers scored in positive territory on this year's Freedom Index. That left 102 demonstrating a bias against individual freedoms. So what do you think that it means when, as a state electorate, we hire legislative representatives who are more than nine-tenths opposed to allowing us to have the final say over how our lives are conducted? It's tempting to conclude that, collectively, we like it that way. I'm sure Senator Conley will be pushing that thesis as he campaigns this year. Sadly, I think the problem is even more subtle than that. I don't think very many of us pay any attention at all to personal freedom as a metric of quality of life. So, of course, we don't use it as a good measure to determine good representation, either before or after we vote. I trust that blanket indictment does not apply to regular viewers of Common Sense. As for the viewers of Dancing with the Stars, though, I am concerned. Ronald Reagan famously cautioned that we are never more than one generation away from the total loss of American liberties. Vladimir Lenin infamously put that same idea another way. He said that when America falls to socialism, not a single shot will be fired, nor will even one communist soldier be wounded. So the Freedom Index, here in Rhode Island, is not so much a tool for political campaigning. What it actually might be is a lab report from the annual physical exam of our state as a patient ailing with a gross lack of interest in its own well-being. If that's what it is, then the ominous nature of its message goes way beyond who's number one or who's number 113. Mark?